do, 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 okay. do. Mushrooms with feet. <laughs> think about how weird Mario really is. Yeah, really. Mushrooms yeah, it's kind of like a bad feet. trip. Little <laughs> like, what were the mushrooms the flower guys? What do you think of the guy who eats a shroom and thinks he's bigger? I mean, come on. Think that's yeah, that's called the sixties, man. <laughs> then he goes and grabs a a flower and he starts spitting fire. It's a me, Mario. I'm Timmy. <laughs> I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. And this. That was dramatic. This is Three Old Tech Dudes. Boys, how hot you reckon it is outside? Mm. I don't know. How do we find out? Or how cold even? We dial like a phone number and uh, learn about that. You, you know, know, do you know a guy? You used to not be able to. Well, you used to be able area. to when I was a kid. Well, yeah, when I was a kid, you could. <laughs> and then for a while, you couldn't. And I know that's sad, isn't it? I called one day and it didn't answer. And I was like, well, that's unacceptable. Well, it was great, great weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> great weeping really and was. gnashing of teeth. It's the end of all. <laughs> we thought it was COVID. Nope, it is not. It's the lack of time and temperature lines. how did we solve that did we solve that we did, did solve so- that? I, I solved that yeah and, you know this actually was a covid project now that i really <laughs> was this, this was the result of quarantine <laughs> hey this week we've got a maker's corner for you guys and it's a justin maker's corner going to explore the making of a time and temperature line so you know maybe if some of you folks out there want to put your own together you could use this for a little encouragement and uh, tinker away all right, so let's take a look at what makes my weather line tick and how it works. So, essentially, what a weather line is, it, it's just stringing a bunch of sound files together in a particular order to make what seem like sentences, like the current time is 345 and it's currently 73 degrees outside. Okay. So here are the sound files for my particular weather line. And so we can start, we can just step through these. So we'll do a, uh, so instead of the current time is mine actually says Walnut Ridge solutions time. Um, Walnut Ridge solutions is just a company that I kind of set up for this, just more or less for fun and to make it sound more neat. I don't know if it does or not, but so this is what that kind of sounds like. Walnut Ridge solutions time. And then we'll go to hours and we'll say that it's, I don't know, seven o'clock or sorry, five o'clock. So we'll say five. Oh, seven. And then the temperature. The current temperature is. And we'll say it's 72. 72. Degrees Fahrenheit. So that's essentially all the system is doing. It's just doing it faster than than what I can do by just double clicking on these in the file structure here. Um, so that that's the the basics of what it does now how it does it gets a little trickier uh, and we have a couple of scripts that that help us out in that and we're going to take a look at those uh, but first we're going to take a look at the hardware that i use so some fairly cheap hardware that that i acquired mostly on e actually 100 percent on ebay um so here's a picture of the interface and the temperature sensor so on top, this is just, it's what's called a one wire interface. Uh, so one wire to USB. If you don't know what one wire is, uh, type that in the Google monster. It'll spell you out all sorts of information on one wire. Um, it's kind of a neat little bus protocol. Um, it allows you to use two wires and it's called one wire because so you have to have a ground, um, but you can actually have the data and the power on the same wire. So that's kind of where it got one wire. 
Um, and then, as I said, down below is the temperature sensor, uh, which is located outside of my house. Um, so I have some, some two conductor cables soldered into both of these. Um, and then this connects, you can connect this to basically anything that will run, um, asterisk or free PBX, which is the variant of asterisk that I run. Um, with a USB port on it. So uh, it could be ran on like a Raspberry Pi um, or any old PC that you have sitting around. Um, since I was making a fairly permanent uh, number, I actually uh, set up or purchased a Intel Nook, which is like a small form factor PC. So it's got a, more power than honestly my weather line needs. Um, but it, it's also fairly, uh, fairly efficient in power consumption. Um, and I wanted that for a couple of reasons. One, it is going to be on 24 seven and I didn't want, you know, to, to add to my already overburdened electric bill. Um, but also I do have, uh, the system and my uh, broadband router connected to a UPS so that in the event of a power outage at my house, um, the weather line will still stay active and can still accept phone calls. Uh, that's a little bit overkill for what I have, but, um, you know, my, my weather line gets about 300, 330 calls a month, which isn't a huge amount, but it's actually better than I thought this, that we would get out of the system. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so that's the hardware. That's the guts that makes it work. Uh, then we're, we'll take a look here real quick at the scripts that, that uh, are involved in, in pulling this off. Um, and the first part of that is acquiring the temperature. So we have our temperature script, uh, and that does a couple of things. Uh, the first thing it does is obviously it acquires the temperature. Um, and you would think, well, that's all you need to do, right? Well, the, the issue that I ran into was that the temperature sensor uh, that I'm utilizing actually gives the temperature in a very precise reading. So instead of just 72 degrees, you get like 72.34856 degrees. Um, nobody wants to call a weather line or a time and temperature service and hear that. <laughs> so um, also in this uh, script, we have it rounding the temperature to the nearest whole number just to make it easier for the system to deal with. Uh, and then the the final part of that is that it actually assigns it what we're calling a, a global variable. So it's a variable that can be referred to outside of the script uh, and referred to in the asterisk dial plan itself. So here's just a look at what that actually looks like uh, in, in Notepad++. So line one is our bin bash. Um, line two is initializing that one wire interface. Uh, and we're utilizing a uh, piece of software, a utility in Linux called Digitemp. Um, it was a utility that was developed basically specifically for one wire temperature sensors. Um, line three is where we're actually pulling that temperature and we're assigning that temperature a variable. And in my case, I called it temp E. You can call it whatever you want. I don't actually remember why I picked temp E. Um, but that, that's what I chose. You could call it literally anything under the sun that you wanted. You'd call it dog. doesn't matter as long as you remember what you called it. You're just assigning it a, a thing to refer to it as later. Um, and then the flags here that you see in line three are actually telling Digitemp how we want the information presented to us or how we want it put into that variable. So by default, it gives you a nice little, uh, the current temperature is, it gives you the reading, and then it has like, you know, Digitemp and some copyright information. We don't want all of that in our variable. We just want the number. So these flags are telling it that we want it in Fahrenheit and that we just want the temperature and we want it to strip out all of that other stuff that it by default gives us. Uh, line four, we're defining another variable within the script. And this one is called temp F. And this is just where we were doing that operation that I was telling you where we're taking our, you know, like 72.38569 and we're rounding it to the nearest whole number um, so that it can be referred to later uh, and play a, play a sound file that corresponds with that number. So then line five 
is actually issuing a asterisk command to assign it a global variable. And we're just calling that global variable temperature so that it can be referred to within asterisk uh, a little later. So the second part of this is the call-in script. You know, your, your system has to take phone calls, right? So how does that actually happen? Well, in my situation, um, I have the very first thing that the system does is it, it answers the phone call and it uh, plays what we're going to call an advertisement. They're just for fun. Um, I don't actually get any money from them. But you could, I suppose, if you were in a market that, that – got enough phone calls and, and you wanted to put the time into actually, you know, going around trying to sell ads. Um, but in my case, it goes to one of two uh, system recordings and those are controlled by a hunt group. It plays one and then the other and then goes back to the first one. Um, and they're just like a quick uh, 15 second advertisement. I have one for my neighbor's tax service uh, down the road and then I have one for our local CASA program. Uh, the next step in this is that it uh, it takes the time. So you've got the current hour and the current minute of the time, and it assigns both of those variables. Uh, we, I called it C hour and C minutes uh, to refer to later. Then we play the current time is recording, or in my case that we heard in the beginning of this, uh, Walnut Ridge Solutions time. It plays then the recording that corresponds to the hour and the recording that corresponds to the minute of the current time that we set at the step above. Next, we get the uh, recording that says the current temperature is. Then the system plays the corresponding file that has the number that we set in our uh, temperature variable. And then finally, uh, mine actually forwards to another system announcement uh, that gives us a three-day forecast. You don't have to do that. Um, it was kind of an added thing that I wanted because I kind of wanted mine to do something that no other one in the area was doing. Um, and there's not a whole lot of ways to be creative when you're doing a time and temperature service, to be honest with you. Um, so this was how I set mine apart. I, I just do a, a three-day weather forecast that I create every day using text-to-speech and uh, a forecast from the National Weather Service. So here's what that looks like with an asterisk. So the very first thing that we have is a 0.4 second pause, just because it sounds better. Um, so we have already played our advertisement at this point when we get to this part. So we add that, that pause because it just, it sounds more natural um, than leading right into it. Uh, and then you can see we set C hour and C minutes with the current hour and current minutes of the time. And then we start our playback commands for Walnut Ridge Solution Time. And then we have our path to hours. And instead of a file name here, we just have the variable. And the same thing for the minutes. And this, again, for the current temperature is. And then we have finish up with uh, the recording that says degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we wait another 0.4 seconds, and then we have a recording that says, and now a three-day weather forecast for the Salem area. We wait another 0.4 seconds, and then we would we forward to that. This return is actually a forward that's predefined. It's a predefined destination within asterisk. If you weren't doing a forecast, after we give our temperature reading and play the degrees Fahrenheit, we could just issue a hang-up command right here, and they would end the call. So let's take a look at what that all looks like live. Uh, so I'm going to give the weather line a call here real quick, and we can actually watch the events as they happen on screen in live logging. Be the voice of a child in the foster care system. Visit CasaWC.org or search Casa of Washington County, Indiana on Facebook for more information. Walnut Ridge Solutions Time, 522. The current temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And now, the weather forecast for the Salem area. Thursday, partly sunny, high near 75. 
chance of rain is 30%. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low around 60 and a 20% chance of rain. Friday, mostly sunny, high near 76 and a 40% chance of rain. Friday night, mostly clear, low around 57 and a 30% chance of rain. Saturday, patchy fog before 9 a.m., otherwise mostly sunny, high near 80. Saturday night, Partly cloudy, low around 61. The Salem Weather Line is a free community service provided by Walnut Ridge Solutions, LLC. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Okay. So that's what a call into the system looks like. Uh, And that is basically it. Um, I had a lot of help setting this project up. Uh, I got a lot of help from a Facebook group that we'll link to down in the description. Um, there was a couple of uh, guys in there that were extraordinarily helpful. Um, one really helped me out with coding the different script files because I'd never done anything like this before. Um, and as some of you who are fans of the channel know, I'm a windows guy. So um, we'll link to that. And then, Also, if you're doing anything with free PBX, I would highly recommend that you check out Crosstalk Solutions. Uh, Chris has a absolutely wonderful tutorial series on setting up free PBX. He walks you through everything from start to finish um, for free. So that's really cool. So go check that out. Go check his channel out. And uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this. I really like the part where you call in and you can see the actual bash shell oh, yeah. script. Yeah, yeah. Or, not, or the, you can see it in the uh, shell anyway as yeah. it answered on uh, free PBS. Just live logging. Yeah, I liked it. So, How, and uh, yeah, you hired out the recording of those for one of them, didn't you? Or- I did. So it actually went through several uh, different versions. Uh, for a while, I was using different text to speech uh, and just making little recordings. Um, didn't really quite like that. Um, was using an Amazon one for a while, which I still use for the three day forecast. But, uh, one day I got one of those robo calls and it was using that voice, that same one. I was like, Hey, I know you. And I decided I didn't like that anymore. So yes, I uh, actually went on Fiverr and found a voiceover artist and, uh, she was kind enough to, to voice that for me. Fiverr excess that success. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. she was great yeah. to work with too. I, I'll, I'll tell you my Flip Fiverr experience. Great. My yeah. Fiverr experience was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, there were a couple of segments where I didn't quite like the sound of, so I asked her, you know, can you maybe do? It? And she gladly re-recorded the the parts that I wanted and and made it exactly how I wanted. So I couldn't <laughs> be happier. Cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Please just pudding. Please just pudding. It's a really neat thing. Uh, <laughs> How how do the viewers call your time, Tim, if they want to hear the weather in Salem area? Well, we'll just (laughs) pizzazz the numbers right down here somewhere. It's uh, 812-896-TIME or 8463. Uh, Or if you want, I I didn't cover this in the making video, but after I got this one up and going, I thought, you know, let's let's make one that sounds old timey like they used to. Um, The old Autocron machines voiced by uh, Jane Barbie. Oh, who neat. who w- was the like telephone lady <laughs> um so there was a fella run runs a website called uh madhouse telephone look that up on the facebooks madhouse telephone he uh he had the recordings nice. off of a genuine uh, autocron machine and was kind enough to uh send those over to me so oh, if you want to cool. if you want to check that out give 812-992-8463 a call yeah. yourself and save, especially during daily discount periods. The time is seven nineteen. Temperature eighty four. Temperature. <laughs> temperature eighty four. <laughs> <Just hung up. laughs> that's mm-hmm. cool. Well, it's nice to know what the temperature is. It is. So the one in Mitchell actually pulls the uh, temperature from the internet. Uh-huh. Um, but the the eight nine six time. Is actually the she's temperature using the one outside. wire sensor. Yeah, using yep. my one wire sensor, so mm-hmm. that's the actual temperature outside of my house in the shade. <laughs> that's really cool. nice. So wow, well, that's a nice one. We need more Justin segments on three OTD. He's good. At that. I don't know about yes, all that. Do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We need, we need I'm a, more of that. I'm a strange one. No, 
No. I like my, <laughs> Why do you think they're watching? I like my jukeboxes <laughs> and my telephones. I love your shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. That is actually a neat <laughs> shirt. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, we are going to have some merch available soon. We are. So, I'm just going to lean back. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, it's my office chair. Anyway. <laughs> so, we are going to have a merch store opening up soon. And this shirt will be in there. That shirt will be in yep. there. We'll have some flavors of these various shirts. These are our prototypes, but yeah. there'll be a lot you don't see here and uh, hopefully some other product. I'd like to have some mugs. It'd be cool if we had mugs. I, I think we can. Yeah, um, so. Says the coffee fan amongst us. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's shocking. Are you really right? drinking coffee at this time of day? I work across one pot of coffee you, each day, usually right up to the end. So. Oh, Only one? Yeah, just one. I keep it a thermos so it stays warm. So yeah, this oh. this is the remains of the coffee I brewed at six thirty this morning. So oh. still oh. Okay. warm. So <laughs> hey, whatever works. Yeah. I like coffee, but I don't like it that much. Really? <laughs> I love it. I just drink it in the morning, but that's it. Mm. That's just for me. But so anyway, we will have some stuff coming up here soon. Yeah. And uh Check we will have... it should be over on three old tech dudes.com if we get everything yep. all our ducks in a row. So and we, that's where you'll find it. Those ducks look, though, they're tricky. And once we have it, we'll put it down there Absolutely. in the in the yeah. uh, in the uh, So you'll be able to find it from links on the channel and yeah, uh, the links below. So we'd love to get the word out about the channel. We really enjoy doing this and uh hope to make it worth our while as the time goes on. Yeah. So. And right now, <laughs> right at this minute, we're at nine hundred nine hundred and seventy two subscribers. Yep. yep. Hopefully, by the time you watch this, so, we'll be at 1,000. So, we'll see. Getting close. Yeah. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button already, what's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> Please do. It really does actually make us feel better. That's for sure. Yeah. It gives our life validation. Yes. It gives us a reason to tinker <laughs> on old things that others might toss away or throw out. Or Yeah. My favorite is where all the antique radios are selling for $100 at the flea market, and they're completely trashed. You know they don't work. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. The chords are all, it plays, it plays. That has not played in 50 years, old man. Anyway. <laughs> Damn. Where's the last time I used it? Yeah. 1938. Somebody man. woke up grumpy, Timmy. No, I just said People, <laughs> stupid people just bother me. <laughs> Speaking of stupid, and these people aren't stupid. Sometimes they are, but looks like they're all good today. They're just crazy. Just it's time <laughs> for Echoes from the Asylum, that part of the, the show each week where we hear from you the viewer via your facebook comments or youtube comments we would take facebook comments we don't oh sure go find us on facebook just search yep. for three old tech dudes so um give that a follow yeah absolutely like. so we post a lot of stuff there so yeah well this week we start out hearing uh from a comment on our old 222 megahertz video that we called an attempt at 222 you know the one where i dropped the antenna i was gonna say that was one where oh, i that almost funny. died that was I, I was sitting there off there watching that going <laughs> this is gonna go <laughs> frankly that's a bit of a boring video but it's a lot of fun to watch and i think i hang out on a tower at the start of it so yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, LSC Foley Jr. writes, well, it was a good effort, guys. I've been on yeah. 220 band since 1973, and there are people nice. like me out there that I use a 223. I use 223.5, the frequency, a lot during contests as well as SSB and CW, and there are lots of repeaters out there. Yep. We lost the bottom end to UPS, 220 to 222 megahertz. I was back in the 80s. Yeah. No, no, no. 90s. 90s. Was that the one that they, was back they there somewhere. demanded and then never used? That's right. Yes. Okay. We had it all at one time, and the sad part is they hardly use that band after they got it. Not yeah. around here anyway. Thanks for the fun time and sharing from Ellis, Whiskey Alpha One, Romeo, well, I can't remember, K, Sierra. So, Kilo. Kilo. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. Good comment. Yeah, and I remember when they took that away because I was using it. Yeah, that's too bad. I was watching Tiny Toons. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's Ninja a, Turtles. Or Tiny and Toony. Yeah. Just a little bit loony. We can't all be old like Nathan. So yeah. I aspire for that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that gum. <laughs> well, next we hear on the oscilloscope badness. I love that video, by the way. It's one of my favorites okay. we've done. Um, the toasters. <laughs> the toasters. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, Nathan. <laughs> what is this toaster? <laughs> Bang. <laughs> It's a good one. Uh, oh, I can't say some of these names. Folks visit our videos, and I think they're from other places, or they're made-up handles. This is Olzegan Ode. Olzegan? Uh, yeah, it could be like Swedish. How's it going, Olzegan? I don't know. I don't know. It's O-L-U. I don't know. It's on the screen. Hey, can you make a video explaining specifically what the back porch, horizontal sink, and front 
porch parts of the analog video signals do? What instructions do they give to the rendering receiver? They are the sync pulses. Yeah. How does the monitor react during those periods of the signal? I haven't been able to pin down their exact functions. Most explanations just give a vague answer. Yeah. So what you got? The front and Don't back porch are the point. Use your shirt's illustration. <laughs> <laughs> front and back porch. Yep. So, on the back porch is where you have the color burst mm-hmm. in, in, in on NTSC. And the color burst is what provides the color information That's, for the frame. That right? actually just gives you a synchronizational pulse. Okay. for Because if you really look at it, there's a lot of junk thrown in this. Sure. And you'd be like, what is that flickering stuff? That's actually the color. Yeah. Um, and, the, and it synchronizes to the 3.58. Well, three point. Oh. It's technically three point five seven nine five four five megahertz. Okay, that little color burst section in NTSC hmm. in PAL. It's four point. Oh, yeah, it's been long enough. It's four point something. <laughs> it's, it's different. Sure. Um. So the sync pulses. If you notice between two, <coughs> excuse me, two two waveforms, it drops to nothing. Yep. That's actually the blanking pulse. So that shuts off the actual scan. So the, the beam, the magnets are still pulling the beam across, but in that off part, it goes blank. That is when the magnet is switching from one side to the other. So that's why when you bring the that back brightness up that's on the HVT, you get those retrace lines in there. That's oh. actually bringing that up too high. And you're seeing that retrace. That's okay. what that actually is. So there's actually, this is the, the horizontal scan. The vertical scan looks a little different from this. And, of course, one's at 59.945 and the other's at 15750. This is 15750 scan. And the other one's a little bit different, but it still has that same kind of pulse. So it's vertical pulse as it goes down. You know, so the vertical is the part that drags the image because it scans from left to right, same way you read in, in the United States in English. <laughs> and I say this because if you're Arabic doesn't apply. Well, yeah, if, if you're in Arabic right or you're reading down. Hebrew or something, like that, it's <laughs> not the same thing. But, so it, reads, it scans from left to right, and then it goes down, top to bottom. So there's a blanking pulse at the beginning, effectively, and at the end, you know, of, of each of the picture, mm-hmm. and then there's one at the bottom and the top that when it pulls everything back to the top and starts over again that's what the pulses do that's what that the porches actually are doing they're they're part of the blanking pulse to start the image and you can measure that off and and that's actually um believe it or not that's actually how the understanding how all that works is how steve wozniak got color to work on an apple computer because he was a tv repairman for one point or did something to that effect and knew how all that worked so he was able to make that run back in the 70s which is really really cool but uh you know crazy smart Um, guy Uh, he's one of the guys i would like to meet one of these days honestly but um you know neat 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 guy but that's what the blanking pulses and that's what the pulses do so you can understand if you know what you're looking at you can tell if something's wrong with something that's producing those pulses so yeah so that's pretty good yeah um and that's kind of a nutshell. There's a little more to it now. Just but basically. aside from that, that it made me think of is uh, programming, understanding programming the original Atari video computer system, the 2600. Mm-hmm. Yep. The the term that is commonly used for programming that is called racing the beam. And yep. the reason is, is that does not have a video frame buffer like mm-hmm. almost everything else. You actually have to program mm-hmm. per the scan line on yep. that Atari 2600. And Several have computers to do, do that too. You have to do all of your like scorekeeping and calculations in, in the, the blanking pulse. In the blanking pulse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's a, and it's like a little oh. tiny segment of program time on the clock that you have to do that. So that's how this works. Too. Well, the Sinclair does that too, huh? This is how this actually works. So crossing into Me. stuff I don't know anything about with that Sinclair. Yep. So I can tell Me. you about Atari's. <laughs> uh, well, if you want your comment in a video, you don't get to pick, but. Make a good comment, an informed comment, or an interesting comment on the subjects we're discussing in our videos and such. Or a really bad comment. Or a really bad comment. Yeah, try not to do that, but... (laughs) 
yeah. but we're not up to you know kicking some trolls yeah. in the shins that's for go. sure um i'm having mic issues <laughs> it's my mic too that's the worst part the mic the stand. Mic stand. Man. don't well, let it get this you one, down man this one, yeah, it's just <laughs> so sad oh man <laughs> so be sure and comment and uh you too may show up as an echo from that asylum that is the youtube comment section yeah uh well you know what there's been some new hams lately what time is it justin it's gotta be time for welcome to the waves <laughs> welcome to the waves that part of the episode where we welcome a new ham radio operator to the fine amazing <laughs> And occasionally irritating hobby of amateur radio. Just being honest. It's not too bad, though. We have Michael Heller, Sr., Kilo October 4, Romeo X-Ray Hotel. KO4RXH from Kernersville, North Carolina, a new technician. Nice. Congrats on passing the test and getting in, man. Yeah. Indeed. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the little bit of ham radio. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo. Well, guys, that was another good one. Learned about the time and the temp and or sorry temperature. Temperature. It's like the people who say mature versus mature. So <laughs> yeah, we're in <laughs> we are neither. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we're, I do say neither we're instead ma- of neither. Ma- mature. Neither. All right. <laughs> we're we're in southern Indiana, so yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we ain't right. God help us all. <laughs> hey, until next time. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. This is three old tech dudes. Later. Thanks for hanging out with us here on 3 Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3 OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3 Old Tech Dudes 1 on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3 OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.